all right, the House is in. And it's unbelievable that the Conservatives are taking all the hits. Um, all these seems to be, all these MPs do not want, opposition parties do not want to go uh, to work. And uh, Andrew Shears on it. And leader More of to come. Official Stay tuned. Uh, for his statement this morning. And he is quite right uh, that during the course of negotiations to bring the House back, that Conservatives were very respectful, understanding public health guidelines and the fact that we had done this two times prior. Not only had we done it, but there are legislatures across this country, Madam Speaker, that are meeting on a regular basis. The Alberta Legislature is meeting three times a week, for example, and the Ontario Legislature has met. So the Honourable uh, Leader of Her Majesty's Opposition said in his speech that it was disingenuous for the Prime Minister to declare yesterday that in fact we were holding up the process because we wanted a full parliament. And I was wondering if he could follow up on what the Prime Minister said yesterday. Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Well, I thank my Honourable Colleague for that question. Uh, it's more than disingenuous, but uh, unfortunately the rules of this House prevent me from using words to describe what it actually was. Uh, th th those in the government and, 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 and the Green Party and other parties are acting like today is some kind of an extraordinary sitting. We were always going to come back on April 20th, Madam Speaker. This was always the date that was agreed to uh, by this House in previous sittings. It was also going to be needed to have a sitting of the House to adopt whatever work plan was uh, agreed upon by all the parties. So it is completely uh, erroneous and misleading to suggest that uh, today wouldn't have happened uh, if there had been some kind of all-party agreement. But my honourable colleague touched on something. Yesterday in his press conference, the Prime Minister raised the spectre of 338 MPs travelling from all around the country, sitting together in the space at the same time. Well, look around, Madam Speaker. This was never what was intended. And all throughout the week, in good faith, our House Leader and the Government House Leader and the House Leaders of our other party were in constant communication where we made that abundantly clear that we were not going to ask our MPs to fill the desks on this chamber, the seats on this chamber, Madam Speaker. We have proposed multiple solutions to the government to have a drastically reduced number of MPs in this chamber, which would then alleviate the demand on the support staff for the administration. So these types of arguments are completely phony. So the real question is why does the Prime Minister not want to come into this chamber? Well, I believe it's quite simple. He prefers the controlled environment in front of Rideau Cottage every day where he controls the number of questions and, and can call it, uh, call it into it whenever he likes and where we are not able to present the questions that we're hearing from constituents, the concerns that we're hearing from our constituents every single day. He's avoiding that taking place, Madam Speaker. That's why we haven't reached an agreement on the work plan going forward. Questions and comments? I don't see the issue with especially with that level of people. They could uh, tighten it up what's going on with the passing of letters, maybe wearing a little bit of PP&E. Um, leave your comments down below, but there is more to follow. Definitely, this is a crazy house. Subscribe and comment.